The Winnipeg Jets are mortal after all, falling in a shutout to the Philadelphia Flyers. So ends the longest winning streak in Jets franchise history. Let's start a new one. We'll dive into all of that on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. You're locked on the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good evening, friends, and welcome to tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. Thanks for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all of your favorite podcasting platforms and to YouTube. Doing so, of course, is always free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. Most of all, though, we just love and appreciate your support. Tonight's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more because right now new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started right now. Now, like I said, the Jets finally lost a game in regulation. They really haven't done that very often this season. Winnipeg has remained one of the best squads in the NHL when it comes to um Quite frankly, just earning standings points. I mean, it's not even like they're overtime merchants. They legitimately win games outright. So it's very rare that the Jets actually lose a game. It's only their 10th regulation loss uh, or, uh, uh, on the season, which is pretty nuts when you think about it, right? Winnipeg, you know, with with how they've been this year, um, you, you would really be hard-pressed to imagine them losing much at all. So when it does happen, and especially in a shutout fashion, you start to ask yourself, well, how did that happen? And I think the single biggest reason was the Jets had played nine games in 15 days. They've had a couple of major injuries, and eventually that stuff just catches up with you. You, you could see it against the um, the Blackhawks that Winnipeg was quite honestly just tired. I think that's the biggest thing. But, you know, despite all of that, they managed to muster up just enough energy for a couple of minutes to come back on a couple of shifts and steal two big points against the Blackhawks. And Winnipeg kind of showed some of those flashes against the Flyers. In fact, they um, came pretty close on a number of occasions to tying or at least clawing back part of the lead uh, away from Philly. But unfortunately, the Jets just didn't have enough in the tank. And I think there were a couple of interesting uh, deployment decisions from, from Bones in this one where I'd be kind of like, yeah, you know, I don't think you need to run Mason Appleton more at even strength than almost any other forward, right? That's probably not the way to come back in some of these games. I like Mason. I think he's done a great job this year. Probably not the guy that I'm asking to try and help the Jets chase the game. But, you know, all that aside, Winnipeg, you know, put up a tough fight. But you could just tell they were a step behind. They were tired. Uh, Philadelphia, especially in the first 20 minutes, tended to control a lot of the play. Second period, not too, too different. Very similar story. And, you know, dead legs and fatigue, it just eventually it wears you down and the jets could really do with a couple of days off which is nice that they've had um, a good portion of this weekend off you know now that the game on saturday ended the jets have had a couple of days off now they'll be playing tomorrow against the islanders which with the islanders having a really rough game uh, today hopefully gives the jets some incentive to go back to get another win streak started so nothing to really be worried about what is really funny is that despite the regulation loss the jets uh, they still keep the streak alive of three goals or less conceded per game. Only two goals surrendered in this shutout loss. Uh, Erson went on an absolute mad one in this game. Really kind of stole probably two points, if we're being honest. The Jets have played decently enough to maybe scratch out a point. I wouldn't say that they were good, though. They they played pretty poorly for like half the game. But like I said, you know, the Jets were tired. And that's just sort of the thing that happens with stuff like this. Winnipeg had won their like previous eight games. So can you really be upset that they finally slow down and maybe drop a decision? No. Uh, Winnipeg has been so good that they absolutely deserve the benefit of the uh, benefit of the doubt. They have had a monster year. Hellebuck still maintaining a crazy save percentage. All that to say that the Jets, you know, finally lost a game. It feels like sometimes you have to lose just to remind yourself that you're mortal, uh, which is really funny because like this Jets team, 
yeah, they just don't really lose to many teams. They're still in third place in the NHL with two games in hand on the NHL leading Canucks. And, you know, they've actually played a, a fair few less games than most of um, the top teams, at least two, uh, one to two less games. So the Jets have plenty of opportunities to uh, try and get back on, you know, that that podium. Not that the Jets are necessarily shooting for the Presidents this year. I think the main concern is just winning the division. You know, if you win the Presidents Trophy, awesome. But everyone knows that there's always the superstition of being first. You just would rather win the Central first and focus on the rest later, which right now, the Jets are still in first in the Central. That's the most important thing. And if the Jets just happen to collect a President's Trophy along the way, that's just, well, really gravy on top of what has been a wonderful, wonderful serving of uh, fantasticness. So the season continues to roll on. I'm sure the Jets are going to go into tomorrow's game looking for another win. I would actually expect them to do so. I think, you know, uh, with Sorokin maybe having a couple of rough, rough outings, um, you know, the, this is a chance for the Jets to, again, go against the Islanders, come away with a couple of points, get another win streak started, and just go back to uh, to what they do best, right? And it wasn't like they were all that awful against the Flyers. There were some segments where they definitely were. But like I said, you know, I think the main takeaway from this game was Jets tired, Flyers rested. You kind of see where that goes. Um, but, you know, it, it, really, it really says a lot that when the Jets lose a game, it's like shocking. <laughs> in previous years, we didn't have a team that was this good and that set our expectations this high to where a single loss or even a couple of goals conceded had you worried about a streak. Winnipeg has done so well over the last few months that the, we're, we're really expecting the world from this team. And that's pretty awesome to say for a Jets squad that, you know, in this offseason, I think we thought could compete for the Central Division crown, but maybe weren't expecting it. You know, this Jets team, uh, the way that they've accomplished their goals and how they've gone about this, it's just not something that I would have thought would be their recipe for success. So all credit to the coaching staff. They've done a great job, and they have still a, a long road ahead. I think this Jets team is on course uh, for a, a really nice playoff run. I guess the big question now is what do they do to reinforce this team? We'll talk about what has made this Jets team a juggernaut and what is still kind of outstanding for this team. We just saw Jay Fresh earlier post some some stats categories uh, talking about where the Jets are kind of leading the league, where they at least rank in the top 10, and where they might actually be lagging behind a lot of their, uh, I guess, competitors, teams that are sort of in the same range. We will talk about that in just a moment. Before we go any further, though, I did want to shout out our friends and partners at FanDuel. The NFL regular season is finally wrapped up and the postseason is currently underway, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. For those of you who are rooting for teams that perhaps got knocked out of the playoffs or uh, maybe didn't even make the dance yet, this is a great time to just cheek out, you know, a uh, Toss out a little $5 bet right on any team, anything that you're interested in, whatever you want to cash in on. You get $150 in bonus bets right back to play even more parlays. Uh, you, they've got plenty of bets under their new Explore tab. If you head into their Parlay Hub, they've got the most popular parlays that you can give another run at. So no matter what you're into, no matter what you're uh, looking to bet on, FanDuel is super easy to use, and there are so many different categories and ways to win. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn right now and make your first bet a chip shot extra point. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us on tonight's episode as we are talking about uh, the, the Jets having finally lost a game, the first real crack in the armor that we've seen in forever. And it's not really a crack. It's more like just a slight little scrape, right? The Jets lose a game, and it's barely a, a grazing shot, if you can even call it that. Winnipeg is going to get right back on its horse and go back to doing what it does best, which is outplaying most of their opponents. Before we talk about uh, what has made this team a juggernaut this year and how it ranks against some of the other teams in the league, I just wanted to shout out a really cool thing Locked On is doing. We have launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with our local experts, plus our national shows covering every league. 
Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Now, like I said, the Jets uh, finally lost a game, but you know what? That doesn't really deter them. They have continued to click along. Uh, it, it's rare that they actually lose in regulation. They really haven't lost their regulation game, I think, since, what was it, the San Jose game uh, before this Flyers one, which is just crazy when you think about it. Um, the other losses have mostly been in overtime. So, you know, those losses, the Jets actually got points. Really funny to say uh, that the team has been this good, but, you know, looking at Jay Fresh, uh, he put together, you know, a, an infographic with some stats categories, kind of figure out where the Jets rank amongst the best in the league, right? In points percentage and in both the NHLs, like as a league and in the divisional uh, share, of course, the Jets rank first overall. Um, in goals for the Jets are fifth, goals against first, goal share first, and, you know, expected goals against first and expected goal share fifth, right? So what this is telling us is that the Jets are a couple of things. For one, they are elite defensively, and they also limit the number of actual goals against. It's kind of a two-part thing here where the Jets defensively as a whole team, both the forwards and the defenders, they tend to control play really tightly, right? When Winnipeg concedes opportunities, you notice that they really uh, are, are really aggressive to correct those mistakes. If they make a mistake behind the net or around Hellebuck or Bersois, they try to clean it up. They'll, they'll force turnovers. They'll try and clean up second chance opportunities. They really don't leave um, rebounds and stuff to chance, right? They try to correct their mistake as quickly as possible and recover the puck, which I think has really limited the number of second chances that opponents have been able to generate against the Jets. It makes it a really layered approach and a really aggressive, uh, physical, hard-nosed team in the corners. Winnipeg is absolutely not afraid to get in your face, and they want to make it difficult for you to get scoring chances. Um, they'll shut down those passing and shooting lanes, even if you do have possession. Winnipeg likes to be very disruptive, and I think it's been very noticeable this year that in other zones of the ice, the Jets tend to step up and try and cut down those easy passes and stuff, or even the stretch passes, right? If somebody tries to come through the neutral zone and hit like a good 15 or 20 foot pass, the Jets usually step up and aggressively try to cut those lanes down. Once in a while, the Jets will give up an odd man rush because of it, but for the most part, Winnipeg has done a really good job limiting the number of those kinds of chances. Now, where you start to see something interesting is that the Jets, um, when you look at their expected goals for, they rank around 18th, which sounds pretty low. And then you'll also see that, like, for finishing, they rank 7th. Uh, the goalie tandem ranks 4th. I think Boston might be in uh, ahead of them. But one of the biggest stories with this team that has been a consistent issue is that the power play and PK rank in the bottom third of the league. So you've got two things, right? The offense at even strength, you look at it, you expect the goals for, you're not seeing a lot. And, you know, the, the special teams we already know. But why are the expected goals for lower? One of the biggest things that I think the Jets have struggled with at times is, is creating offense in the slot. And we've talked about this before. I think that's actually something that also translates to the power play as well. The slot area where, say, on the power play, Shifley has usually made his, his bread and butter in years past that area has not seen as much traffic at um, on the man advantage. At even strength, you're also seeing a very similar pattern where the Jets don't tend to create offense in that manner. I feel like Winnipeg does a lot of below the goal line kind of play, or they have um, maybe rebounds and stuff that they try to create off of. You'll also see Winnipeg attack from the faceoff circles, but it's very interesting that the Jets don't tend to attack the central slot, which is considered the most dangerous area on the ice. The Jets have a whole host of ways that they like to score, uh, tip deflections being one of them. Again, face-off shot, face-off circle shots, um, and, and sort of angled finishes there. One thing that, you know, Velarde has really brought uh, to this team has been like backdoor tap and finishes. That's been great to see. But I think that the Jets could definitely stand to uh, engage the slot offense a little bit more frequently. As it is right now, they're not really concerned about it. I mean, this team is still doing amazingly well. And thanks to the goaltending and defense, they really haven't had to worry about the lack of 5v5 production down in that area at all, right? The Jets are cleaning out opponents. They are generally outplaying them. They're running, you know, expected goal and actual goal share thanks to having a fairly productive and balanced offense up and down the lineup and an elite defense and goaltending combo. 
So, you know, if the Jets aren't creating as many high danger opportunities at 5v5 as some of the other teams, it's maybe not the biggest problem, right? The Jets are making their style of hockey work. Where I think the Jets really need to improve is on that special teams bit, right? And I don't think it's just a, a question of talent. Even when Kyle Connor was still here uh, prior to his injury, the power play just wasn't that good. He could mask some of it, but, uh, you know, you also saw the, the static motion, the predictability, all of that stuff, which has been a, a consistent problem for the Jets special teams over the last few years, was still a problem when he was healthy. So um, that's something that I think the Jets have tried to fix over the past couple of weeks. I've noticed some changes in the way that they play off the puck, and I think there are moments where um, the second unit especially has been effective in just kind of simplifying their game, attacking the net, being you know very straight and to the point, and it's actually paid off on some good chances. So for the Jets, I feel like if they even get close to like average special teams, this team is going to be very scary as a whole. They're already one of the scariest teams in the league. Now they just need to clean up the power play and hopefully at some point the PK because the PK has been uh, way, way too bad this year, too leaky. I know that they have the streak uh, against a couple of bad teams where they were like 11 for 11 before the Flyers game. Yeah, that's not really a PK that I would say you, you want to take against better squads, right? That 11 for 11 against better teams is not going to survive. And I think we saw that uh, against the Flyers on one or two opportunities. So for the Jets, you know, there's there's work to be done. But like I said, it's it's stuff that's relatively correctable. And I think something that, for the most part, the Jets aren't too worried about. The, the power play might be a bit of a pressure point, uh, a pain point for them going forward. But, you know, thankfully, when you get to the playoffs, the most important thing is that you are a strong 5v5 team. And the Jets are just that. So let's hope Winnipeg can keep it up and, uh, you know, maintain what should be a, a rollicking second half of the season. Now, I did mention Kyle Connor a little bit, and I wanted to talk about an interesting development that we're seeing with some of the, the, the lineups and practices recently. Kyle Connor might be back <laughs> uh, as soon as tomorrow, which I can't say I was expecting at all. I know that he is on the timeline of like four-ish weeks, but if you ask me, it's a little concerning that he's back so soon, but he's practicing in a regular jersey. Maybe he really is ready. We'll talk about what his return to the lineup might mean for the Jets and you know how close Shifley might be in just a little bit. Before we go any further, though, I do want to shout out our friends and partners at Game Time. When it comes to sporting events or concerts or whatever you're into, you know, it, it can be a pain buying tickets. Game time, you know, totally gets our suffering. They know that we hate surprise charges. We don't like going to events and not even knowing where we're sitting. Game Time wants to take all of that guesswork out and make it as easy as possible, giving you in-venue seat views so you know what you're actually paying for. And they also offer super awesome last-minute deals, flash sales, and so much more, all backed by their best price guarantee. And, of course, they also have an event cancellation protection and all that fun stuff because they know that if you're buying seats, you don't just want to uh, fire and forget, right? If, if something happens, whether... You know, say in my case, if I bought playoff tickets and maybe the Baltimore Ravens actually got eliminated, you want some sort of you know, safety and security that you're spending all of this money and you have a chance to get it back because no one wants to go to an event that doesn't exist. So if you want to take the guesswork out of buying tickets, go with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and be sure to use promo code LOCKED ON for $20 off your first purchase. Again, terms apply, create an account, and redeem code L O C K E D O N for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us on tonight's episode as we wrap up with a couple of closing thoughts. Uh, one of the biggest ones being Winnipeg's recent injury woes. Jets have lost a lot of players, uh, and, you know, guys are slowly filtering in. You know, Kapari in his return against Philly was definitely a, a little bit rusty and kind of seemed like he was just struggling overall. Thankfully, the Jets are also due to get some other reinforcements. Shifley is still kind of uh, a day-to-day -day thing. I think he might be a little bit longer term than, than the Jets might be letting on. Uh, a groin strain can be one of those things where you might be out for a week or so, and maybe that's similar to what we're dealing with here. Look, I'm not a medical expert, but I feel like that kind of lower body injury, which can really limit your mobility, is something that you just don't want to rush. And that might be why the Jets have been a little bit reticent to put him in practice and stuff. 
I think the last thing that they want to do is have Shifley aggravated or or have it become something more serious. Because like the team just doesn't have a replacement for Mark. I know that people in the comments were saying the Jets have center depth, and that is true. They've got lots of guys who can play center or are natural centers, but obviously no one produces at the level that Shifley does. So uh, his his loss is definitely being felt because it forces a lot of guys further up the lineup and. While Lowry and Nemesnikov are, are certainly doing their best job in the in the top six as they can, you just know that it'd be more preferable to have them more suited to their natural roles, right? Right, like Lowry back on the third line, Shifley back on the first, and Nemesnikov again, you know, maintaining his second line role, which he's been doing recently. But you know, obviously, uh, Winnipeg wants to have that Shifley line running a little bit more often, so. Um, Mark, we'll, we'll hopefully see him soon. I'm hoping that perhaps he's even good to go against the Islanders, but I feel like if he's not practicing, maybe he might not be 100% enough, uh, so they might maybe wait one more game or so. Ehlers was also actually absent from practice, but I've heard it's more of like a maintenance thing, so not too worried about that. I know that he's uh, been dealing with some stuff recently, but he seems like he just hasn't really slowed down, so that's good. He does get, you know, he is subject to a decent amount of abuse on the ice. Thankfully, he's kept uh, chugging along since his earlier injury recovery. Obviously, the, the the what was it, the hernia stuff, that was pretty rough. And we weren't really sure what we were going to see with him. But, you know, since he started to find his form over the last few months, he's back to doing what he does best, which is fantastic. Let's just hope that he stays healthy for the rest of the year. As far as, you know, Perfetti is concerned, Perfetti's wrist injury doesn't really seem to be bothering him too, too much. Uh, hopefully he can continue on like he's been recently. Um, you know, I know that he's probably a little bit chafed about not having any points in his last game, same as the rest of the Jets. Uh, so hopefully he comes out hungry and looking for another goal to his already impressive campaign against the Islanders. Now, the big name that has really stood out is, is Kyle Connor, and that was one that I wasn't really expecting at all. I thought Connor would probably be another two to three weeks away, but he might actually be good to go against the Islanders, which for me was a, a shocker. I, I can't say that I saw that coming at all. Uh, I thought, you know, I, I know that he is technically in the spectrum for like, um, you know, the lower end of this time range, right? But I just, I, I for the life of me feel like maybe they're rushing it a little bit, perhaps because the Jets are dealing with a lot of injuries right now, and maybe he says he's good to go, and perhaps you know the 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 knee evaluations and stuff are are fine, and he's cleared. But it just feels like Winnipeg is really pushing for him to come back as soon as possible. And while I don't hate that per se, I don't want him to run into a situation where he gets out there in a game and then reaggravates the injuries. So let's just hope that you know the full contact practice and stuff is actually giving him a good taste of what it'll be uh, like back from. Um, injured reserve, you know, again, he's so pivotal to this team's success. Uh, and, and obviously, you know, for the power play, it would be a huge boost. And if Shifley has to sit again, having Connor back would be awesome. So I, you know, the, the fan part of me is like, yeah, let's get it back in. You know, we want to see him back as soon as possible, but the other part of me wants to be cautious and not push it. Cause like if Connor misses a, a much longer period of time due to it's like some sort of re-injury or something that would be devastating for this team. You know, the, the jets probably don't want to keep living without Connor for much longer. So let's have it back in. Let's see what happens. Uh, if he's good to go, right. If he's not, you know, rest him another game or two, there's no rush. The Islanders aren't exactly a juggernaut themselves. One more game off wouldn't be the worst. But if this is the game that he comes in again, I am at least excited to see how the new lines look. And hopefully Mark can come back so we can see what this mostly healthy lineup finally looks like. It's It's been a while since we've had uh, a full Jets forward group that's as close to healthy as possible. You know, we might still be absent for it for one more game. But hopefully if everyone can come back in tomorrow, we will get our first uh, Connor, Shifley, and Velarde uh, game all together, all as part of this what should be healthy unit. And, uh, you know, it'd be nice to see what, like, a, a playoff preview lineup might look like. But let me know what you're expecting from this game against the Islanders. Drop your thoughts and comments below uh, or at my social medias at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. But for tonight's episode, that is going to be all the time that we have. I thank you so much for making Locked on Jets your first listen of the day every day. As always, uh, catch us tomorrow for hopefully some good, uh, you know, recap stuff against the Islanders. I'm hoping for a win, crossing fingers. We'll see how that goes. But like I said, that's all the time that we have for this evening. 
Have a great night and go Jets go. You're locked on the hot. 